So today we are uh, talking about uh, the tips and tricks of the using leaflets. So many times, ma many of the test engineers feel sometimes uh, difficult. Uh, how best I can use this uh, Glyphox tool? So there are some uh, smart ways to use the Glyphox. So certain like a uh, glyph, uh, certain like a uh, metadata, something the way of uh, seeing the uh, windows. So today we will uh, see all the uh, related stuff uh, on the Glyphox, which may save your time of doing the data analysis. Uh, before going to that, let us see the agenda. So agenda will be introducing ourselves, introducing our company, HDM Prinsia, and uh, tips and tricks along with the demo. So I may not be showing uh, the slides, but however, the slides are available to you uh, after the presentation. You can download the slides and see. Instead of showing the slides, what I will do, I will directly go into the software and do the uh, necessary demonstration on the software itself. Then you can see, see over here how it is helpful for in saving your time, time of uh, analyzing, the, analyzing the data and viewing, visualizing the data and how best you can do as a presentation to your uh, team member by utilizing the bigger window size, something like this. So these tips and tricks demo will help you to manage all the stuffs. Right. Let me let me try to put some uh, for, for at the end uh, you may put some questions and we can be able to answer the questions. In addition to that, if you have further questions, you uh, you are always most welcome to write down in the support portal uh, as well as uh, to my email address. Right. Let us talk about uh, the principle who we are. So we help the engineers to deliver the durable and reliable products to avoid the cost of unexpected failures. So mostly our focus is on the software brands of ENCODE, which deals about the durability mathematics, and the Relia software deals about the reliability mathematics. In addition to that, we have a training program to the engineers for the reliability point of view, as well as the durability point of view. All our training programs are with the real industrial case studies with the hands-on along with the softwares. So we provide the uh, case studies to solve in the in the classrooms. So nowadays there are the training happens in the online. The other portion is the services. We do the material testing in our laboratory. Based on the material testing, we establish the Asian curve. And most of the user of ENCODE, you may see the SN curves in the software which are integrated as a premium material database or as some material database, something like that. Where we provide the solutions for the industrial problems as a consulting event. And from a reliability point of view, we help the company like oil and gas, uh, petroleum industries, chemical industries to manage their assets from a reliability focused point of view. So in the left side, you see the software portfolio belongs to the Relasa. The variable block same Lambda predict, they are most of the time dealing with the uh, real data. The variable analysis handle, variable uh, software handle the uh, component level data as well as the system level data from a reliability growth point of view. In addition to that, there are some accelerated testing module which are integrated in the YPP++. So this really take a decision based on the laboratory testing or the field testing. And the system modeling is handled by the BlockSync as a RAM analysis. The Lambda prediction helps for the electronics or electromechanical components based on the standards, something like a military standard, Delco, Delcodia standards. So the variable block sim and Lambda predict is uh, revolving around the qualitative, quantitative method because they are dealing with the data. The FMEA, RCM, XFOS, and ACT, these are 
related to the reliability management and strategies, which helps the industries to orient towards the qualitative approach as a FMEA and as a reliability center maintenance, something like that. So as a SAP, SAP it's like a web-based portal for all the reliability applications to show some dashboards and tracking the reliability project, something like that. So in total, as a qualitative as well as quantitative approach, you can have a Weibull plus plus, you can have a, a software in reliability for, from Relia software. Coming to the durability portion, the encode provide the durability softwares. The design life is based on the CAE based fatigue analysis. It helps the CA engineers to, to analyze with the five box tricks or uh, design based fatigue uh, calculations, uh, fatigue life. Glyphox helps the test engineers to analyze the test data based the durability calculations. White size helps the engineers to analyze the vibration related and acoustic related analysis, which uh, helps uh, so related to the MPH, uh, something like uh, ride quality, so many other model parameters, something like in the life size. And our next level platform of Akira, which is uh, fully a web based uh, test as well as CAE related analysis. So whatever you can do over here in Design Life, Glyphx and Vibe Size, you can do it over here in Akira with the help of a web-based portal. So the, the next level platform, which helps you to integrate all these things in a web-based approach. So today our focus is on the Glyphx to see about the tips and tricks of how do we use the Glyphx. So let us start about the uh, Glyphox. Say, when I'm, when I'm talking about, uh, say, for example, this presentation, I would like to show you from a very basic uh, idea. So something like uh, the engineer who doesn't know about anything on the encode, who would ever see the anything on the encode. So uh, engineer get some data. Say they would like to see some uh, how the data seems to be like this whether it's a signal as a spiggy line or something like a FFT or something like a histogram. So to see what is that data and whether the data is supported by the encode software, you can have an encode viewer as a free download available in the website. So anybody can download the encode viewer to see what the data it is, what kind of a data format these are, whether it is available by encode or so you can download here with the encoder viewer from this web page. So this can be this can be you uh, by, by by double click thing, click, clicking the data, you can see how the data are the squiggy lines. So by the way, if you have the encode software, you can see over here with the encoder viewer. From now onwards, what I will do. I will switch over my computer to from the presentation to the uh, software because uh, seeing all the slides will be a very boring stuff. I will refer the slides in the site and you can you can uh, see over here with the software. Now I'm switching over the software. Just destruction. Chat back. Okay, cool. Now what I have, I can have this uh, uh, software. Okay, let me let me just close the software. Let me start from the beginning. Okay, because for the new persons. Let me launch the software. Okay. So when, when you fire the software, when you launch the software, it will ask you where the file is located, where you want to uh, work as a work, uh, workspace area. So this workspace area has to be uh, administrator rights to work upon the file. Sometimes you are uh, writing some file based on the analysis what you are doing. Okay. Let me. Let me root the work folder. 
once you root the work folder, you can see the available data which are there already integrated into that. So by the way, there are there are ways and means. Okay, if I refresh that, whatever the data is available, it will come inside into that. Okay. That. In addition to that, you can rearrange or you can modify the uh, place where you wanted to see your see your data. Okay. Now let me show you that encode viewer. So there is a if you uh, if you have a software which is integrated in which which is uh, already there in your computer, you can see here as an encode viewer. Just double click, just click the file where, where which one you wanted to see, and you can see over here as an encode viewer. So as an encode viewer, this is a free download available. You can download and view that. If you have already the software, it is al uh, also inside into the software. So you can interactively see over here what is that data, how the SQL gay lines, is there any anomalies? Just uh, uh, as a visual approach, you can see over here. Okay. And in addition to that, you can see whether the data what I have collected from the DAC will be able to directly see from the software. So this is from the uh, the encode viewer point of. The next item is uh, viewing the workspace. Now you can see over well, here. Many times, as an engineer, you may feel that, hey, come on, this uh, I have a so I have a computer which is uh, with this uh, screen size. I wanted to always uh, squeeze the place. Uh, my flow has a very big flow. I wanted to show the flow in a one single place. So this uh, sidewards, uh, I'm facing some problem. So what can I do? How do I show my flow? Something like that. If you have such kind of a problem, say let's say. Uh, you can utilize this uh, uh, window by by zooming this. Let's say, uh, let's uh, let me put some of the uh, some of this. So I have, I have the time service approach, and I have. Uh, uh, I want it and I have a display. <laughs> So if I keep on going here, so I can I can zoom over here to show me during the presentation. That's one one point is positive, and I can zoom out this to search here. This is one. And in addition to that, there is a button here to show you the full screen. Now you can eliminate. You can uh, uh, come out from the data available and as well as the click palettes which are available in the right side. So either you can uh, zoom here. With the this button or with this button to show you the full screen. Full full screen. Again, you can come back to the full screen backwards to the regular regular uh, screen display. So the left side will be your available data, and the right side will be the clip palettes, whatever you are working from there. This is a uh, one one uh, one uh, one more tip. Okay. Now, sometimes you feel that uh, what, uh, uh, I need to get rid of this uh, space. Uh, can I, even without the full screen, can I utilize the sideways? Can I utilize the place which are available here as a, as a glyph palettes? But I would like to always uh, refer the glyph palettes uh, in a, whenever I want or whenever uh, um, uh, in a quick manner I want. Okay. Yeah, there is a there is a possibility here. By the way of uh, by the way of by the way, of pulling this glyph palette to some uh, some variants. What I do, I just hold it here. So if I hold it here, I can I can pull this. If I hold it here, I can pull this. I can put it here somewhere else. Now can you see here? The available data is in this place as well as the glyph palette here. I can toggle over here by this glyph palette as well as available data. But in addition to that, I have the right side space which are which are occupied by this glyph palettes is uh, free to me. So this is this this uh, this kind of uh, 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 space you can you can utilize further part putting a uh, flow putting a flow. Okay. There is a another additional widgets. So let me let me keep it this way. The glyph palette as well as available uh, available window, available data like this for the for the for the presentations. Now you can see here over uh, by the way of some different additional windows. If if you go here and show the see the view buttons, you can see here as a property editor. 
By the way of clicking the property editor, you can see something like this. So this becomes a cool feature. You can you can uh, highlight any of the glyph, and immediately you can you can uh, edit that. Okay, I want uh, the uh, properties, uh, some of the properties to be false, some of the properties to be true. So you can you can you can uh, directly edit here by the way of uh, selecting that, highlighting the glyph. Many times, what happened? The engineer used to do with the right click as well as go to the properties and uh, do something like this. The same stuff is available here when you are when you are managing with the property editor, which has been put here in the notes are as a property editor. Okay. Then there is another one thing called the diagnostics window. So this side, this diagnostic window, what it will help you to do that is how the process is executed. You can see over here, oh, something like that. Oh, there is no data here, something. So you can see over here, by the way, I'm saying, oh, run is finished within this much of uh, seconds. So this this gives a diagnostic fact where the, uh, there is a problem in the group or some setting is missing, something like that. It's like a diagnostics. So you can see this kind of uh, information as addition, addition, additional windows from the property editor as well as the diagnostics windows. Right. Now, if I don't want that, then I can here and I can go back as a regular view. Okay. So this will be possible to see over here. Right. This is from a Windows point of view, additional windows and getting something like, like uh, spaces, uh, managing with the spaces and and uh, using, uh, seeing what, what, what kind of uh, flow it happens and how much is the time to complete the flow doing the data analysis, something like that as a diagnostics. Now, many times you may feel that, hey, I wanted to see the glyph, but I am not able to find that. Is there any possibility I can, I can uh, see here in the glyph palette? Okay, let's say, uh, I know the glyph is in the function, but I don't know uh, how, uh, by the way of seeing that, okay. Now I can see here by the alphabets or something like that. Let me type T. Oh, there is a test combination as well as there is a, another T. If I type it for another T, it will be time to split and a time series. So if I keep on typing the letters of the first letter of the glyph, this keeps on moving it back. Okay. So like uh, that's a little test. If I say extreme response, so okay, E. So there is only one available in the letter E. If I do it a shock, it is only available like a shock, something like that. Sometimes I need to check with the display, XY display, XYZ display. So there are two display available. So I can toggle over here to find out where is my glyph available just by the, the first letter of the glyph. Hit the first letter of the glyph and it can cycle through all the glyphs that will start with the letter. Okay. So one of the cool feature is sometimes, oh, I wanted to do something, but I don't know what, how the glyph helps me. Okay, let me put that. Uh, I would like to see, uh, I would like to see the joint distribution. Okay, so this is like a tool tip of, uh, oh, what, what this joint distribution will do. This performs a joint distribution analysis on the MC, something like that. Okay, so if I, if I just show the mouse, point the point the uh, uh, mouse over here it will uh, give me a tooltip of what that glyph will do for me okay. something like that uh, I can I can show over here like a damage editing okay what this will do so there is a readily available information on the uh, on the glyph about the tooltips the next one is the glyph palette searching. So I would like to search the glyph palette instead of, instead of going there and checking that uh, which palette the glyph is available. Sometimes it is very, very difficult to remember all these things. Uh, uh, smart way is to just search the glyph. Okay, I wanted to search like a F of T. So please remember it is not searching as a, as a glyph name. It is searching the, the letter, uh, the, the, the search words, whatever you are typing here, which is available in the glyph information as a tool tips. Okay. So can you see here the FFT terms is there in this tool, FFT. Okay. And in addition to that, there is a PSD, 
because uh, this I have I have named it my PSD like a, a, what do you call it? a customized PSD. So I can see over here as a this also an FMT. <laughs> so if I wanted to find out a rosette. I can see over here the word like a rosette as a such were available in this tool. So this search is like this virtual star. And if I search like something like a vibration, so it searches which are the glyph with the information of vibration is available. So you can see over here a term called vibration inside this tool. So it is searching the it is searching the keyword not in the name, but along with the tool tip. Along with the as a glyph palette such as a very quick search to help the person to select. Okay. Now, uh, on a daily basis, uh, engineers may be using a, a repeated uh, glyph for their own analysis. Okay, but what happened? The software is shifted to you along with the standardized uh, glyph palettes. Uh, with the, uh, these are all individual called the palettes, and the, the, they are called as the glyphs. So the software which comes along with the defined uh, uh, palettes insight into that. Now, in case if you wanted to create your own uh, glyph palette, something like that, you can do with that. You can do the same for your quick and easy efforts. So I have created a one which, which is there in the name of uh, SSRD. Okay. So now what you do for that purpose, you, you go to the button called create. Now you can name something like that. Okay, so this is this is my this is my this is my uh, what do you call it? a name. Okay. So you can you can put some name over here. So this will create the name. Okay, already I have created a name like this. You can see over here, right? So in, inside into that there are something called a different uh, kind of uh, uh, glyph palettes. So now what I do, I I will put some of the glyphs which is there inside into that. Now what is that? Uh, there are some glyphs which is available here. Let's say uh, I, 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 have some, I have some uh, glyphs. Okay, let me say that there is something called uh, optimized testing. Let's say test match. I have okay. So this glyph, I would like to save this in the palette, which I am interested in to see that in the name of yes. Okay, I can group over here. So how do I frequently? So I can put it into any kind of uh, any kind of a bit click palette. Okay, I put it into my collections. Okay, as a way, it's a risk match. That's a clear. Okay, I can give some name over here. Now the same thing will go and sit it here in my collection. Can you see that test match? Whatever it's there. Okay. So it is not like that. You just uh, pull here, it will go inside. No. So you need to do certain things of creating the clip and put it inside the clip palette or whatever you have renamed it. So this is a whole feature to customize your own uh, group palettes. Right. So the next one will be a uh, saving a glyph. Now you can you can uh, rename some of the glyphs like this. Okay. Say for example. Uh, this is like arithmetic. You have something like a setting of uh, information like a, uh, uh, like some operator. So this is the glyph you are keep on using for so many so many other other uh, procedures. So if you have edited something like that, let's say it calculates some uh, it uh, it add the mean value something like that. So you can you can do whatever the editing you want, and you can. Uh, you can see, hey, just add me a, a constant of arithmetic constant of 150 along with the signals. Okay, so if you, if you are using this uh, glyph for, for most of the time, what you do here, you can just save this glyph as a place where you want and frequently used. I can save this as arithmetic glyph. Arithmetic of, of uh, 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 customized. So now I can use this. So always, so can you see here? So if if I if I pull over here, it will have all the information which I edited. So there is no need to go there and each and every time I keep on editing this. So this is like a one time one time you do that and you can store all the clips which are related to you 
and you can customize that list for your uh, future purposes or particular activities. It, it, uh, uh, it uh, reduces the sum of the time of your analyzing and uh, make some something that it it will do some value addition to that. Okay. The next is uh, uh, connecting, adding and connecting a new clip. Say, let us go to the clip panels. Okay. Now, I wanted to create a low light clip. Let me create some other. So I, I wanted to do some input, time series input. Okay. So as, as a way, there is a there is a different way possible to drag the leaf as well as uh, as connecting that. Let me show you one of the things like that. Okay, let me let me do it. as a arithmetic. Okay. So I can put it here. I can do with a pipe connection by the way of one or two times. Okay. This is one way. The, the another way is just pull the leaf. And you can bring it over here. By the way, of when you come closely towards this, you will see a you will see a yellow dot. So by the way, if you leave that, it will go and attach with the pile. Okay. It's a pull feature. So there is no need if how to do it again with the pile. Just go here and then. now this blue color will connect with the blue color. It will not connect with the histogram only. Let's say here, if I'm if I'm just by mistake, if I'm doing that like a histogram uh, display. Okay? So this never connects with that because this histogram histogram is not a uh, uh, input available here in this. So you can see what such a so this red connects with this red. By the way, of seeing that. Okay? So that's it. This is a cool feature. You can you can just bring this and you can connect it over here because the red connection and the blue connection here. This is adding and connecting a new. Right. The next uh, tool tip would be uh, inserting some clip. Let's say uh, each and every time I go here in the clip palette, I can pull some of the glyphs while I'm trying to do some analysis. Sometimes, if you, if you know about that, okay, I want some, uh, let's say, 10 glyphs at uh, 10 in my in my flow. I know what are the 10 glyphs. Okay? So in a one single place, in a one single screen, you can you can uh, bring all those glyphs into your workspace. So how to do that? Let's say right here in the workspace, just uh, press the insert glyph. You can see here as a uh, glyphs which are listed over here. Now these glyphs are with different types and a name, something like that to the descriptions. You can see here, I want a time series input, time series input. Okay, next, next I wanted to do something like arithmetic. So you need to search over here where is that. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I wanted to do something like uh, uh, other input. Okay. You can you can select that by the way of control but control button and do something. Okay. I wanted to do with something uh, generator. There are many clips. I want that. I wanted to display like X Y Z X Y display, and I wanted to have a bottom with filter. So if I know that I wanted to do some integration function, arithmetic glyphs. So just press the control button as well as uh, choose the glyph. And you can see here over that there is a button inside selected glyph. So this will be done in one single view. So remaining things is up to you. You can connect over here and generate the float as a quick possibility. This is like inserting a glyph at one single. Uh, but one second click. Now, the next item will be uh, renaming the clip. So many times what happened, you wanted to do something like, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, do something like a uh, uh, integration. Okay. So I wanted to do something like uh, available, there are some uh, acceleration data available here. Okay, these are some acceleration channels. I want to see the see the uh, 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 integration by the way of getting a uh, uh, displacement or the velocity. Okay. 
So let me do that with that. Oh, this is what this is what it has. It, it can do some integration out here. Now, once you do that, many times what happened, what it is doing and what this kind of input is there. Okay. So instead of saying that TS input four or TS input uh, something like that and the button with meter one integration, you can rename this kind of uh, flow. What it what this glyph is doing here in this particular place. Say if you are managing a very complex, uh, uh, big, uh, bigger size of flow, this is quite easy to see at this place what is happening in the flow. Let's say I just uh, rename this integration. Okay, this is this is getting an input as acceleration and acceleration to velocity. Okay, so this is this is uh, something. Oh, sorry. Okay. Right. Oh, so now not maybe uh, this is like uh, let's say this is like a displacement. Then integration will be yeah display yeah this uh, let let me name that into acceleration into velocity. Okay. So I can rename what what the, what this cliff is doing. Then it is easy for me in future to see oh this is what it's doing and now I am getting that uh, like this is for the acceleration data yeah. so I can rename that particular release to to show me in future what it is doing something like that as a rename in the okay. okay. rename so next uh, Previously, we have seen inserting a glyph in a one single uh, single uh, uh, click. Now, what we can do here, we can just go to this flow. Next will be the how do we connect? So let's say there are there are so many glyphs which are just hanging. Okay, so there is no connection is uh, done. What I do here? Let me go here to the. Go here in this. Right click into the pad, not right click in here. I'm just right here. Right click here as a time series output, and there's a button called connect. So if I see here, what are the possible ways this glyph can be connected? Now you can see here there are something like a blue color. Okay. This 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 colors are possible to show you, do the connections. Yeah. Maybe for the time being, let me put some histogram display. display. So now we can see here, just connect. Okay, so you may not see a histogram display to be able to connect because this connection button, this connect, right click and the connect will show you what are the maximum possibility of the glyphs available, which are able to connect with this uh, time series input. Okay, now I can show over here. Okay, you just connect me with a display one, display, display three, something like that. I can show over here. Okay, so just connect this. Like it directly can show here. Yeah. Such a cool feature is possible with this uh, kind of a connect. Okay, so why this is required? Many times, what happens? Uh, you have a very big flow available here, and uh, sometimes it is very very uh, difficult to see the uh, the uh, see the clips which are over here somewhere else. Okay, it may it may not be fit into the window or something like that. So in such a situations, if you're if you're seeing a very uh, very much zooming now, and you can see over here to connect this. Okay, this kind of a connection is possible. Such a way, such a way, this helps you. Achieve, achieve the connecting to the un, uh, what do you call connecting to the hidden uh, uh, glyphs which are away from the workspace. It's a cool feature, connecting it. Okay. So there are certain things uh, related to the user information on the flow on the glyph. Okay. Let's see here. Say already there are the the, the what kind of a uh, job is done by this glyph. So as a user, you can enter this as a user information. So I wanted to do something here. Let's say convert my acceleration data to velocity by the way of integration.
such a way I can see here. So this this goes and see here as an information. What is that it is doing? It's doing. So uh, this this uh, this helps the, the user or the person who is using the flow uh, to what what it does as an information. Okay, as a information. Right click here and go to this information. You can write down the information whatever you want and you can click here and save this. So this will be available as a information as I. So there are something uh, other other tips like a pad tool tips. Say we have this uh, the the uh, tool pads. Say sometimes what happens there are certain glyphs which which has uh, many more pads. So in this case the time series pad is only one. Sometimes you have uh, some kind of a uh, pads which are like a strain. Let's say let's say kind of a glyph stress life or strain life glyph. You will see there are so many pads available here. What to do with that? Okay, so if you hover over here as a mouse, uh, you can see what is that damage time series, and this uh, helps to to damage time histogram, and this helps to range the histogram. So you can hover over here what it will do. Uh, in the case of many many of the uh, uh, as a as a connect pad, okay, something like that with a different color coatings. Okay. Right, this from the pad. Right. So there are there are so many other other uh, uh, readily available key uh, key shortcuts are available. So let's see here. Of course, so there are most of the Windows key uh, helps you to um, do that. Just like a Control A, Control A means it is selecting all, select all, and the Control C, Control B. These are all very common things. Control A, Control C, and you can Control B here. So you can see here everything is copy and paste here, something like that. And of course, there is a control Z. Control Z means control is that. So undo the things, whatever you are doing here, you can undo the things. Control is that. Something like that. So this is uh, short tips and available are uh, always available. And uh, there is a save uh, process. Control S means you are saving the process. So what kind of a process it is or what kind of a flow it is. And if you use control open, uh, you can open a flow like this. There is another one a feature called the control I. So this will give you what is the flow it will do. So it, it takes the input as a time series, uh, input time series as an acceleration, and it converts acceleration and then convert into velocity. So you can you can give the information about the process, what process is is uh, Doing okay. as a informa information about this process, so this will be stored over here, and you can see over here okay. as the information. So whenever you press that control line, so it will give you the message like, oh, this is the process which we do this stuff. Okay, details about the process, and if you press that control R, so it runs the process, it runs the flow. So just I am pressing that, there will be a blink in the control uh, the run. That's a link that happens in the control. Okay. So control R is the process to run over here. Wow. The next up, uh, next item will be right. So let us move to some of the things which are related to the data. From a data, how do we see the data? How kind of uh, what kind of a different data uh, viewing possibilities are uh, available in the Firefox? So this is uh, from that uh, matrix view. Now you can see here, right click uh, the the available data. You can see view as a table. There are there are, there are some different possibilities of uh, viewing this as a table, view as a matrix. You can see here there are something like a matrix format available. Okay, you can see. Oh, this this the data. This is the data which is there in the ATV. This is ATV zero one and ATV zero one. Uh, and okay, so you can see over here with the different matrix. Okay. There are some strain data. This is available in ATV S three D. Okay, there is some force data which is available, which is available there in the build force data. So you can see here. This is to select the channels as well as this is to select the test. So you can see this as a uh, consolidated way of uh, seeing the matrix view. 
again, you can uh, again you can see here what kind of a different files and their metrics. So right now I have ASCII file as well as the time series data. So you can you can see all this here. Always, of course, uh, you can go over here and see that view as a tree. You can go back always to show in a different uh, format of that data viewing that. Okay. This helps for the matrix view to see the available data. Okay. And the next uh, tip will be on the channel details. Some of the details are available. What kind of uh, basic details for the channels? Uh, let's say here, right click here, and I can, uh, once the data is uh, just arrived, I can see what are the details of this, you know, what are the channels it is, and what kind of a basic uh, information about the length of the data, what is the sample rate, and uh, what kind of x and y z, y is uh, y units, and uh, mean, max, in, max, and uh, standard deviation, all the relevant statistics which are in a one single uh, uh, kind of uh, kind of Excel format. So if if you are exporting that, it will go into the CSV file again. Just in a one single click, you can see here over what are the details of this particular channels, what are the uh, available statistics, something like that. Okay. In, a, in, a, in a first uh, first look, okay, as a channel details. Then you can see some of the things like uh, preferencing of displays. Let's say let's say here. I have a display like this, okay? If I wanted to see here, I wanted to zoom like this, okay? So, but uh, each and every time zooming may be difficult for me. What I do here, if I want, I can say this as a display of uh, this much of uh, zooming as a say load as a save as a default configuration, okay? So this will, this will help you to make each and every time when you do analysis, this will be, this will be stored like a, configuration, whatever you have saved as a default. So there is no need you can, you can again back and uh, do the zooming. So whenever you are doing this kind of anal uh, further analysis and run the flow again, then it will be stored and it will be displayed like a default in here. So can you see here? This is the one which I edited, but uh, this I didn't do that. So that's the reason it's not fine. So as a display point of view, you can, you can uh, um, show it here with a display. This can be possible with a multi-column, multi histogram, time series, or whatever maybe that kind of a data display. But the next two uh, tip on process. How do you save the process? So many times what happens, if you are interested into directly saving as a process, what happens, you need to uh, give the data along with the process. But there are some features available like uh, save process with the data. So if you save this, whatever data you have inside into the input file it will also be saved. But uh, the size of the file will be huge because it is like a compact file along with the data, compact flow along with the data. Okay. Such a way. Right. Um, Somebody said that my things are frozen. Let me stop and share it again. Okay. Right. Say so, uh, this uh, save process for uh, with the data. So if I do that, the the data will be saved along with the process. And save process and data. Okay, package process and data. If I do that, package and process, it will it will be saved like a zip file. I can zip this as a process as well as uh, the data as a zip file. There is always a possibility like that. There are three things like a save as a process individually, save with the data, and save this as along with the data as a zip file. And this is for batch process operating or the different batches of this packaging the uh, data as well as this uh, flow. Okay. Now, I wanted to save uh, uh, the the some uh, something like uh, let's say something like if I do some types of uh, some kind of uh, analysis on that, and I wanted to save this as a file. Okay. Let me let me do that. I wanted to save this. So I wanted to save this as a 
Huh? So let me let me do that. I wanted this uh, output to be output to be in a in a uh, in a different file. Okay, let me let me do that as a file. So time series output. Let me save this as output file. And this output file, let's say here, this will go and uh, and uh, place it here in the working folder. But sometimes what happens if I'm not a, if I'm not enabling some of the feature, this will not be readily available. I need to do a refresh button, then I it will come back to me. Okay, so to, uh, to avoid this, what we do here, add to file list. Let's say let me make it as a true. So in case if I'm if I'm uh, creating several files as output files, if I make a, a, a feature like a true for add a, to file list, then what happens? It will keep on going and it will uh, uh, it will be sitting inside the uh, working folder directly, and it will be available immediately to me once the process is uh, once the flow is uh, complete. Okay. Let me just do that. Uh, now you can see here there is a there is a file which is just now analyzed as output okay as output as output file so if i'm not if i'm not choosing this what happens if i'm not choosing this let me just remove this if i'm not choosing this button what happened i need to do a game to refresh the button so it will ask me to override because already i have written the file in my folder let me override but it will not show here unless otherwise i click the button like a uh, refresh button so, okay. so this feature will able to make uh, uh, immediately after the process is uh, completing the run uh, it's available for the data analysis window this is a good feature uh, next let's see here I wanted to say something like a select only the place where I am interested in to do the analysis. Let me show that feature. So this is like a select the section to analyze. So what I do here, let me let me open a file. Let me show you the file. Okay, I wanted to uh, do only this portion. Let's say the time frame between 200 and uh, 450. So I wanted to do only this analysis. Now. If I just uh, keep on doing that, it will it will zoom the place. But I'm not interested in that. So what I do here, I just make a control button, press the control button, and select wherever I want. So from 200 to 450 seconds, I wanted to do some kind of a analysis. So let me check that control button 200 to 340. No. What's happening? Okay, let me, let me go back. Yes. I'm not sure this control button is not working for me. Okay. Right. So this gives me a only a highlighted portion to do the do the analysis like that. So as a highlighted portion only to do the analysis. So, right. So let's say the the next uh, cool feature is a combining a multiple test. Say uh, if I have something like uh, so many data to be analyzed in this uh, in this uh, uh, input data. Okay. So right now I have a only one. Right now I have only one single. 
only one only one CP test. So I would like to analyze this with the multiple uh, testing, and it has to be posted here in my display. So uh, how do I do that? Okay, let me go with that. I have uh, another one. I have. Uh, Okay, a TV one, and there is a wheel for something like that. So I have multiple tests. So if I wanted to combine together and uh, do something like that, analysis, like you were right. So something. So which I wanted to do that. Okay. So I have right now, there are two tests which, which has been done. So I wanted to show here is a combine all the tests. Yeah. Right click here in the process, what is launched. You can see here, combine all the tests. Right now it shows a false. So you can make it as a true. You combine all the tests and show the, as a result. Okay, just ensure that it is happening. And if we can do over here, by the way, so this feature helps you to combine all over the test and do the analysis for you. Okay. Something like that. Combine all the test. So this is a, another feature to combine and a multiple runs over here. Now, the next uh, next item will be on the metadata display. So if, if you are doing something like, a, a, let's say, metadata display, So I wanted to show you some of the some of the analysis analysis like analysis like this. Okay. So with my with the say if I wanted to do so two two level of uh, testing two. Let me put it in this way. There is a signal. Okay. So I'd like to show this kind of uh, thing in that. Okay. Let me let me show it now. Now you can see over here with the multiple things and it, uh, it has to be analyzed in that. Yes. So you can collate the different uh, different tables in the statistical results to show that by the way of by the way of uh, making a <laughs> making a properties like this, not a little display. Okay, going to the metadata dis display as well as the advanced, you can see here, collate the test. So it keeps on, so it keeps on doing with that. Like this. Okay. So if you, if you wanted to, so if I wanted to show the sum of the properties, something like that, I can edit over here. Okay. Let's say I wanted to show only this, uh, I do it as a test name, something like that. And some uh, results. So it keeps on. So this keeps on doing that whenever I do the analysis of this. Okay. So now you can see here there are two two test results. Okay. So I have I have two tests. And so these two tests are combined together in this in the metadata display. Okay, as uh, collecting the results in the metadata display, as collecting the results in the metadata display. Okay. So, as a metadata uh, to use it in the glyph. Okay. Now, what I do here, so there are certain kind of a metadata information I can use it here to to uh, do some editing or do some corrections on my uh, on my data over here. 
let me just uh, uh, do, do it all. Uh, just uh, remove the data, remove the test. So I would like to do some uh, arithmetic on that, let's say. Okay. It's arithmetic. Let me do that. Oh, cool. I, I have already, I have already something in my, in my, already created that for, for five. Oh, this arithmetic. Yes, I remember that. This arithmetic will do, uh, with a kind of a constant with, with directly adding some constant. Okay. So this can be add some constant over here for 150. And I can, I can show over here. I can show, you just copy and paste one of the display here. Let me put it here. Just make it here. Right. So let me let me put it in this way. I wanted to do some arithmetic calculation to add this for the for the available data. So how to do that? Okay. So now this is the, the this is that. Okay. So now if we see here, we can see over here with a three point one two nine with the value. Okay. Now what it does so here. Three point one over nine and the one foot. So it is it is adding something. Yeah. Three point one plus one fifty, one fifty three point one. Okay. Something like that. It is adding as an as an arithmetic. Now I wanted to do something on this uh, here. Oh no no you 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 pick some metadata from the data from the data and do something over here. But how do we so in the arithmetic constant go here? Pick the metadata of the display of the data, whatever you have. So let me say there is a mean. So there is a mean value. From the mean, you add something. From the mean, you add subtract something. From the mean, you uh, do something, something like so. I can do some uh, mathematical operations here and and uh, 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 display in a in a XYZ display. Can you see here? This has something add add this. 3.109, it is added with uh, some, the mean, mean of that, and the data is uh, shown over here, 3.097, something like that. Okay, so you can use this as a metadata uh, uh, in the glyph property to do some of the operations for here in the glyph. Okay. So the same same feature can be used as a metadata to be used in that test splitter elements, test splitter glyph also. Let me go to the test uh, splitter. Ah, so there is a test splitter. I wanted to do, I wanted to see some of the data to be separated for my interest, for my own interest. Let's say in this uh, in this kind of a data, I have something like a force momentum. So I don't want that uh, other other uh, channel to be analyzed. I want only the force to be analyzed. So what I do here, I just put it the data here and I connect it here. And I wanted to show only this. Let me let me put it this way. So in this case, I am using the kind of uh, metadata here. So even I can pick what metadata to be to be done. So let's say I'm just picking here as a title. Let's say the, the let's say the title uh, channel title. Uh, Okay, then start. Okay. I can uh, use that units or I can use something like, uh, like this. Okay. Then I can I can see here there's a force. Okay. So in case if you see a kind of a force, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Ah, that is a, it contains something. Okay. Sometimes okay. Let me search this. Still something. Let me put it in this way. There is a title. Just Okay, let me put it that way. I would like to see that as a test, test data. 
with my dance. Uh, contains something kind of uh see it's starting it's uh it's a chat but okay ah channel type okay right so it selects only this uh, force uh, channel, nothing else, uh, the momentum and other things is going to be available here. Okay. So by the way, can I split that in a uh, channels? Okay. All right. So up to now, uh, we, have, we have seen so many kind of uh, tools and trips like that. Now, if you, if you want something like a help and you can always go here and find the help, you can see over here with the different uh, manuals, something like that. In case uh, if, if you don't want uh, individual files to be remembered, just go and see this. There, are, there is a content. So this content PDF is a single PDF where you can have a link over here with the multiple PDFs. Now you can see here, oh, I wanted to see something like a fatigue theory. Okay, what is the theory background of that with the different uh, glaives and other things you can see here as a fatigue glaive. Okay, as a fatigue, as a, this is a PDF of the PDF. Okay, such a way, right. So well, all over all over the software in the encode uh, there are there are certain kind of uh, uh, workout examples you can see here in the Glyphox. Say in the Glyphox uh, there are something like uh, uh, examples. Uh, there are some twenty seven examples. If you if you are interested into the design life, uh, there are some uh, thirty one examples. And if they are interested in to see something related to the wipe size, there are some 11 examples available here for your future reference and your self-study. So something like that. Okay. So uh, after now, we have seen all the tips and tricks, uh, something like that. So unfortunately, I could not able to show you the slides because the slide is only uh, content which are for the reference of the presentations. I, I could able to show you some of the all the other uh, stuffs uh, like uh, uh, in, the, in the software feature. Now we have come into the concluding portion. So before that, uh, let me show you one thing like in case if you have any questions or something like in future, you can see over here, you can uh, uh, write to us in a tech support, like uh, tech support is available in the support portal. Okay. So we do have a support portal. If you have access, you can uh, write down the questions and we will be happy to help you on that.